Here we are at Cooper MMA. This is my buddy Nick who's going to help me out today. Um, I wanted to do a video on escaping the mount. Uh, this has been one of the things that, uh, that I've been requested to do a video on. And I figured I would use somebody who is bigger than me. <laughs> so uh, before we talk about escaping the mount, there are four basic mount positions. And I'd like to go through those briefly. Um, the sort of classic jujitsu mount, why don't you come over here to... Uh, sort of classic jujitsu mount involves catching the feet. I like when I mount to have control of an arm. So one hand behind the head and then I trap his arm with my head. I wrap my feet around and I grapevine his legs. If I'm bigger than him, I'll extend my legs. If I'm not, I want to keep them in uh, as far as wide as I can. Okay, cable grip, head down. My elbows are there. If he starts to roll from side to side, I can post and I'm pushing my feet apart to keep him stable. Okay, that's really the jujitsu way of doing it. In judo, I like a higher mount. My feet are under his butt. My knees are spread to prevent him from rolling. So I'm actually posting with my knees once again. I want to control the head. The arm, less important, but I tend to like to keep it trapped so that he can't scoop my arms out. The advantage of the feet behind the butt is if he tries to bridge, I can come underneath. Now when I flatten my stomach, it prevents him from bridging my hand behind his head so he can't use his head to bridge or post. All he can do is go from side to side. I think this is actually one of the strongest versions for controlling your, your opponent. Um, another version, and you also see this in judo, is a very high mount. Um, here my feet are actually off the ground, pushing against his hip bones. My knees are in his armpits. The advantage of this particular mount is I can strike and I can attack the arms or I can go for chokes and his head is, uh, is exposed. With this mount, I don't want to be straight parallel with him. I want to be slightly at an angle. That's really true for all of these mounts. The angles are very helpful here. And the last one, really the so-called schoolboy pin, which I don't think has any real application in, in martial arts, but here, I'm either pinning his hands down or I have my knees on his arms. And this is the very, very poor position. This is very weak because if he has any strength, he can kick his legs up and just throw me off. So I really discourage these kinds of pins. Again, he can bridge fairly easily here and throw me off. So. The other three where your body is down. Those are the ones we're going to talk about. All right. So each one has to be escaped slightly differently. So we'll start with the jujitsu version where he's wrapping. So he's going to grapevine my legs. He traps an arm, has one hand behind my head. So here, the first thing I need to do is to try and untangle one of the legs. If he's grapevining, grapevine, yeah, uh, particularly with a larger guy, this can be difficult, but I'm going to try and move slightly onto my hip on one side and then straighten the leg that's on the side of my head, not the side of my arm. So I'm coming from here moving onto the side, straightening my leg and using that to come out. All right. Now I have two options. One is if I can reach his leg, I can come around the outside. From here, grab the arm 
he's already blocking, blocking his opportunity to post because he's got his arm around my head and flip over. As soon as I flip over, I want to try and track this leg to sit through. So once again, my foot's down here. I'm moving onto my hip, pushing this leg straight, coming around the outside, push down and trap. Grab the arm, flip over, lock the leg down, if possible, and sit through. Even if I can't sit out, the worst position I'm going to be in is a half guard here. If I come, uh, grapevine, grapevine, there we go. So I'm unable to free this leg, unable to come underneath, can't reach, can't get any leverage on his leg and this isn't working. So next option, I've straightened it out. Now I'm going to curl my toe, bring my leg in tight. I'm trapping his leg here. Then I move the other leg. This will prevent him from stretch, try and stretch me out in here. He can't hold my, once this leg is trapped, he can't hold the other one. Both legs on one side, very important, okay? I no longer need this. I'm gonna bridge up because my feet are close to my butt. That gives me the power to bridge. Even if he's pulling my head up here, I can still lift my butt off the ground. A little more difficult and I end up in his guard but once again, I'm, not, I'm no longer being pinned. So it's a much more advantageous position for me. So that's the second option if the first one doesn't work. Okay. From the high position, the high judo position. So this time his feet are under my butt. He's preventing me. I can't reach his foot. You want to control my head then other side. Okay. With the arm in. With the arm in or not. Yeah, this is good. Okay. So if I can get here, great. But if he's really high up, I can't do this. I can't bridge easily. But what I can do is I can use my lower body weight for momentum. So, so here I'm, I'm going to bring my legs up and use them together and start building up a swing. Legs will go straight up and I start rocking side to side. At some point I'm going to scoop the arm up and flip over. Sometimes this will take quite a number of, uh, of efforts and actually I can go in either direction. All right, that way is a disadvantage because he can stop me by posting, but I should be able to make him worry enough on one side so that the other side may go if the first side doesn't. So once again, the feet go straight up and I start to swing. Trying to get this way, no. Then the other way will work because he's gonna resist by trying to block one way or the other. So as long as you get the momentum going, you can't give up. Once you start your swing, you must keep going until something tips. Okay, there's an amusing cheat that you can do on this as well. 
So I've tried to get going here. And it's just not working. Usually, in order to, I want to keep him tight to my body. But it isn't working. If he's wearing a belt, grab the belt, push. So I'm trying to get out. He's not tight enough usually. Try and pull him in. Maybe that's enough. Maybe it's not enough. Look at the belt. Push up. Push out. And there's a very nice, very nice ankle lock right there too. You can follow into. Okay. Another one. So this time, his, uh, his heels are in my hips. His knees are pushing into my armpits. So here, now I have to be careful about chokes and arm bars here. So what I want to do is bring my arms in into a defensive position here. You don't want to be too high, right? If you're too high, if he's high like this, I'll push out and I will just escape. So he's got to be low. Heels in my hips. There we go. All right. So he's looking to attack me. I want a defensive position. So I'm going to use a little bit of leverage in my defense. And once again, I want to flip onto, I want to move onto one of my hips to escape the heels in my, in my hip bones. Once I've done this, now I can start pushing the leg down and trap. And here we go back to that first escape. Grab the arm and over. So the important thing here is to get the heels away from my hips and defend. Push up onto the side, push the leg down, trap it. Okay, doesn't matter where your arm is here, right? If he's trying to cross face me, right? I wanna try and stop that. If he succeeds in cross facing me, it still doesn't matter. I can grab, pull him down, and still come out to the side. Okay, so a bunch of strategies for escaping a top mount. Thank you. If you like the videos, please click like and subscribe to our channel, Serio Kuzenyo, that means maximum efficiency.